Sweet. Good? Okay. Hey, MCA, welcome to the MCA Wednesday night at home premiere. We're so glad that you uh, tuned in again this week and you're continuing to check in and stay connected to um, our church body. And you're joining us each week as we go through this study in the Gospel of Luke. And uh, if you're new, we've been just going through the Gospel of Luke, all the times that Jesus prayed or taught on prayer. So we're really trying to focus in on the discipline of prayer, how we can improve in our prayer life, and, and really looking to Jesus, his teachings, his attitude, his times in prayer. What can we learn? How can we apply that into our life so that we can be better at praying like Jesus prayed? And so, so that's where we've been. Uh, just a few announcements. Hey, don't forget Sunday morning. We, we're live um, premiere at 10 a.m., 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Um, and good news is this will be our last live premiere at 10 a.m. without physical gatherings. We'll be gathering June 14th live in person at 8.30 a.m. at 10.30 or 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Uh, so don't miss that. We'll also offer our online stuff, uh, but we're so excited for our time to meet on June 14th. Mark your calendar. Be here. Here's the big announcement. Which service should you come to? Well, if you regularly attended our first service, our 9 a.m. service, before the, the quarantine, the stay-at-home procedures were in place, please plan to attend either the 8.30 a.m. service or the 10 a.m. service. If you were regularly attending our second service at 11 a.m., please plan on attending our 10 a.m. service or our 11.30 a.m. service. That way we'll space everyone out and uh, not exceed our numbers as we continue to try to follow the guidelines. If you'd like to see how we're responding with these guidelines, you can check the church website, mcthechurch.com, how we're going to relaunch. It's all right there. You can uh, check in there. And of course, we'll keep offering our online stuff. Okay, if you've got a Bible, let's get into it. We are in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. We've been here for a few weeks. We're really diving deep into the Lord's prayer. Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. Um, what is essential? Uh, we, we are in this pandemic, and it has helped define what truly is essential, hasn't it? If you think through it, man, I, I would have thought that haircuts were essential. Turns out that I've learned haircuts are not essential. <laughs> haircuts are something that you can look as shaggy as necessary. You can ask uh, someone in your household to give you a haircut. We're not going to call those essential. Restaurants. I used to think they were essential. They're, they're not es essential. Shopping malls. They're not essential. Medical needs are essential. Prescription eyeglass wear. They were mostly closed. Um, banks are essential. Home improvement stores. I, I don't know why I was shocked by this, but I thought home improvement stores would be closed, but it turns out that they are essential, and, and that makes sense. But there is some debate as to what qualifies as essential and what doesn't. But it's important, and, I, and we're going to capitalize on our thinking in this, uh, in this pandemic of, of learning really what essential means. And essential, just the, the basic definition, essential means this, absolutely necessary or extremely important. Absolutely necessary or extremely important. Perhaps more than anything, we learned that home and the people within it are essential in this time. We learned that we should value where we live, we should take care of where we live, and that includes, and, and most importantly, that includes the people within our household, that, that they are essential, and that relationship matters, and we need time together. We need to, to love one another and through thick and thin. We need to be connected, and we need to realize how essential our, our close-knit family unit is. Uh, in today's verse, we're going to read it, verses 1 through 4, chapter 11. We're going to talk about our daily bread, but first let's read it together. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation. 
Give us each day our daily bread. That's our focus. Uh, Matthew Henry, one of my, my favorite uh, commentaries to use, has this quote in there where he says, the, the idea here is today's bread for today, tomorrow's bread for tomorrow. Today's bread for today, tomorrow's bread for tomorrow. Keep that in your mind as we examine this, this short portion here of Scripture. See, we spent the last few weeks learning from Jesus' teaching here, and we learned a few things. We learned that there's a, a proper posture for prayer as we address our holy heavenly Father, that we are not God, that He is different from us, and that's a good thing. He loves us. He invites us to pray, but He is not us. And so we come to Him with reverence. We come to Him with, with, with fear. We come to Him expecting something, and we come to Him with a certain posture to our prayer. We, we also learned that our prayers are to be focused on God, that we're to be completely focused on God. So many people, we already addressed this, so many people come to God and ask Him to get on board with their agenda, but rather prayer is to be us getting on God's agenda. When we pray, we come to Him and say, Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Help me to submit to Your agenda. Help me to submit to Your word, to Your ways, to Your will. That, that can be a challenge, and hopefully in your prayer life, you're really examining that and, and making sure that we're coming before God as holy servants, not the boss, right? He's God. We submit to Him. And now today, we're going to be invited to, Jesus directs us to shift our attention. First, it was on our Heavenly Father. It's on His will, His kingdom, our submission to it. And then just briefly, He calls us to shift our attention to ourselves, if, if just for a moment, to our physical needs, to our spiritual needs, to our daily bread, that which is essential. Today's bread for today, tomorrow's bread for tomorrow. So the question is, today, what is our daily bread? For, for you, in, as a Christian in Moreno Valley or wherever you're watching from in 2020, what is qualified to be your daily bread? What are your essential needs? You see, it's not the intent here to see our prayers reduced to just simple sustenance. That Jesus is not saying you can only pray for the bare minimums. <laughs> do not pray for anything outlandish. Do not pray for anything big. Do not pray for anything bold. Do not pray for anything that you want. Only pray for your simple sustenance, that which will sustain you. Only pray for bread. Only pray for these, these staple needs like bread and water. That's not the intent here. And yet, this does not give us license to request uh, frivolously or extravagantly. And, and you know the difference. You've seen Christians who, who seem so humble they lack faith. They, they ask God for almost nothing. And then you see Christians who ask God for the most outlandish things. Like, why would you ever pray for that? Why, why would you expect God to, to give you that and so we have these kind of two spectrums, and, and God is really directing us to pray in a certain way. He's saying, when you think about yourself, when you pray for yourself, pray for your daily bread. I think it might be good for you and, and I to make a my daily bread list. My daily bread list. This might be good uh, of just practice for you this week as you have some time possibly to sit down with a, a pad and paper, spend some time praying and meditating on what you really need each day. What you really need each day. This, of course, would include food and water, absolutely. Health, I'm sure, should make your list as you, you sit down and do this. And this is really a challenge. Please take time to do this. Health should make the list. Perhaps your list might be more personal. Maybe you have a daily struggle with anxiety. So, so for you, today's bread for today and tomorrow's bread for tomorrow means, God, I, I need you to help me deal with my anxiety today. I need you to help me to deal with these stressful situations. And then tomorrow, I'm going to need that again, but we'll talk about tomorrow tomorrow. And so our, today's bread for today, tomorrow's bread for tomorrow, this daily struggle for you, maybe it's depression. Maybe it's some sort of sin that you fight, like lust. Maybe it's, it's just fighting to love someone. Maybe it's fighting to love your kids. Maybe it's, it's, it's choosing and fighting to love your spouse. Maybe for you it's forgiveness. Forgiveness has come up so much in our talks on prayer. Some of you have reached out to me for you know, deeper answers 
on forgiveness that, that we're trying to work through, but this daily choice to forgive. It's hard to forgive sometimes. But maybe you need a daily bread option where, where God says, you know what, every single day I'm going to help you to choose to forgive. Maybe that makes your my daily bread list. Now, I recall a story of a poor couple. They were just newlyweds, and they were struggling just to, to make ends meet, just to get by. And they lived on a busy street, and they had no garage. And uh, I was talking about this with actually my brother, that, that people don't seem to park in their garage as much anymore. But they lived on a, a busy street, and they had no garage. So they had to park their car on the street. And it wasn't a nice car, but it was theirs. It wasn't a nice car, but it was theirs. And how many of you have been there, right? It might not be great, but it's ours. Um, well, one night, their rent was due. And their Christian couple, actually, uh, he was a pastor, and they had come up short on their rent, and so they were praying, and they were asking God to provide somehow, that God would just miraculously provide financially for them. And suddenly, there was a knock at the door, and uh, some, someone was at the door, and they went to the door to answer it, and this person told them what had happened. Someone driving by had sideswiped their car. Busy street, you know, close-knit corners, and they sideswiped their car, and they did the right thing. They came up to the door, and they offered to give the couple um, a, a few hundred dollars in cash rather than filing insurance. They wanted to just take care of it that way rather than filing insurance. And they rejoiced. This couple rejoiced because God had provided their financial need to pay rent. So they gladly accepted. They were actually excited about it. The car was a little bit scraped, but no big deal. They, they were totally fine with that. They could pay their rent. Well, God continued to provide for them when they lived at this house. God continued to provide for them in the same way many times in the early years of their, their marriage. And, and the more times it got hit, the worse the damage got. So the more money people gave to cover the damage. So it seemed like every time it got hit, people would look at it and be like, wow, I did that? And they would walk into the door and give them some money to try to um, help with the accident that had just taken place. So they would pray regularly when they were facing financial need. They would pray that someone would hit their car and give them some money to help cover their expenses. Maybe... Your list is so personal that something like that makes your daily bread list. Or we need this. We need this, this struggle with our finances. We need you to provide in this way. I need you daily to help me with my anxiety, with my worry. I need you daily to help me with my, my anger problems. I need you daily to help me with my addiction. Lord, these is, this is daily bread for me. This is essential for my survival. This is what I need. But I think it's it's good to throw in some of your personal things, not just make it generic, food, water, and health. Write down, really, on your daily bread prayer list, what do you really need from God each day? Some, some people struggle with praying every day. And I wonder if just this simple task of writing down what they need from God each day might call them to at least pray over those essential needs, their daily bread list. God, I need you to show up in this way. I know you showed up yesterday in this way, but I need you to show up today in this way. What is your daily bread? And here's the point, and this will help your prayer life. Our Heavenly Father wants us continually dependent on Him. Our Heavenly Father wants us continually dependent upon Him. God wants to talk to us. God wants to talk to us. He wants to hear our heart. He wants to meet our daily needs. He wants to talk to us. This is another reminder of how personal our God is. God's not threatening to withhold our needs if we don't pray, but rather he wants us just to ask for them. He's a good father. He wants us to ask. He's not saying if you don't pray for your daily needs, you won't get them. He's simply saying, I would like to have that conversation. I would like to hear your heart. I would like you to be reminded that you are dependent upon me, that you aren't in complete control, that you don't have it all together, that you need me as your heavenly father. Can we have this dependent relationship? Will you talk to God each and every day? You know, here's an example. My son has a bad habit. <laughs> I think a lot of kids have this, but my son has a bad habit of telling me what he's going to do rather than asking me what he wants to do. And maybe your kids are like this too, just spoiled brats. No, uh, just kidding. And so, so he has this habit of saying, Dad, I'm going to do this. And he informs me rather than just asking me, especially 
when he knows the answer will be yes. That's when it's the worst. When he knows the answer will be yes, he just assumes that I'll say yes. And so he doesn't ask me. He simply just tells me. So he'll say something like, Dad, I'm going to play in the yard. Very informative, very authority. I'm raising a man, so I like that. I want him to have some authority. And yet, he should really ask. He should say something like, hey, Dad, may I go play in the yard? And he knows the answer is going to be yes, which is why he just tells me. But he should ask, Dad, may I go play in the yard? Or, Dad, um, I'm going to play with my Legos. Okay, you're going to go play. <laughs> Rather than, hey, Dad, I-, I finished my meal. May I be dismissed to go play now? Or sometimes, especially at his grandparents' house, you, you want to talk about spoiled. Whew, you should meet this kid's grandparents. I mean, wow. Um, when he's at his grandparents' house, he will just grab a popsicle after the meal instead of asking if he can. He'll just walk straight to my parents' freezer, pull out whatever goodies are in there, ice cream or popsicles or whatever grand thing grandma has bought from the store, and he'll just come back to the dinner table and we're like, hey man, where did you get the popsicle? (laughs) Where did you get the ice cream? And he'll say, well, I finished, so I helped myself. It's like, no, you don't just help yourself. Even if you know grandma's going to say yes, you still need to ask. See, how this connects to prayer. This connects so well to our prayer, and I think we can laugh at it, and maybe God's giggling at our lack of requests. But really, we need to understand that he still needs to be addressed the right way. You see, Mike is addressing me as dad. He calls me father. He knows he needs to tell me. He needs to inform me, and he knows what the outcome will be. See, see I think a lot of Christians don't pray for their, their essentials, their daily bread, Because they think, well, of course God's going to give that. He gave that to me yesterday, the day before. He's provided for me for many, many years. And so they just stop praying for their daily bread rather than assuming that God wants to continually be asked. So even though you know the outcome, even though you know what the answer is, you need to come and ask your heavenly father. See, if Micah doesn't ask and he just assumes, he may be addressing me as father, but he's treating me as if I'm his servant. We have to be careful. I hope this is coming through week after week as we teach on prayer. The way you talk to God matters. The way you talk to God is a big deal. We do not address our Heavenly Father demanding that He meet our agenda. We do not talk to our Heavenly Father demanding that He meets our needs. Rather, we come and submit to His agenda. We come and ask Him to meet our needs. He wants us continually dependent upon Him. So what should we do? Well, you should ask. Even if it seems small or insignificant, ask. Just ask him. Ask, even if you already know the answer. Ask. Just have this conversation with your Heavenly Father. Ask for what? Ask for needs. Ask for your daily bread. Gavin uh, Childress, a a theologian, says it like this. "There's, There's no encouragement to ask for luxuries, but only for the necessities of the body. How strange it must seem to God to hear people praying to him all over the world, some for a simple bowl of rice and others for a brand new sports car. How strange that must be to God to have people all over the world who are made in his image, who are loved by him, who are chosen by him, are his his daughter or son, and one's crying out just for a simple bowl of rice and one's crying out for a luxury car. Now, we need to ask and ask away and and ask boldly, but ask for needs. Daily, ask for needs. Know what you need and make your request every day. Know what you need and make your request every day. the, the, The bottom line is, and kids forget this all the time, you'll hear kids talk about like, this is my house. Oh, these are my clothes. Oh, that, that's my PlayStation. And then you'll hear the conversation with the parents like, Who, whose house? I bought this house. Whose PlayStation? I bought that PlayStation. Who bought the clothes on your back? I did. It's so quick how we defend ourselves, and yet, how do we treat God? We assume that because we went to work that, that this food is our food, that we provided it, that we provided our own outcome, when actually we need to come to God as his kids and just say, hey, God, I need it again. And I know there's already food in the fridge, but I I need you to provide for me again. I need you to help me continue to to pay my bills. I I know I paid them last month, and I'm not even worried. But Lord, would you help me to pay my bills? I I, I need your help, Lord. 
protect my health. I had a conversation today with people, they don't even have a thermometer. They don't even own a thermometer. They've gotten so comfortable with their health, they didn't even think that they would ever need to check on themselves. And we need to daily remember that that health that we have, that's a gift from God. That's a gift from God, and we need to acknowledge it. He wants a continual conversation, a continual dependence upon Him. So ask. Ask for needs. And how often? Daily. Ask for needs daily. And and, and here's where we're going to go with this one. Ask for needs daily. Fresh cooked meals are always better than leftovers. Amen? And now I, I have heard that there's meals that are better the next day. I haven't tasted and seen that that is true, but I've heard. But, but in my opinion, fresh cooked meals are always better than leftovers. There's nothing better than fresh. There's nothing better than fresh. When, when we daily bring our needs to God, hear this out, I think this is powerful. When we daily bring our needs before God, he gives us fresh provisions for that day. Today's bread for today, tomorrow's bread for tomorrow. I don't want today's bread for tomorrow. I don't want to have to manage and, and portion out my blessings. I don't want to manage and portion out my essentials. I want to trust God today's bread for today, tomorrow's bread for tomorrow. And so I trust him. I want fresh provisions every single day. We need fresh mercies. His mercies are new every morning, and we need fresh mercies. This is great because I'm a creative sinner. I need new ways to to be, I need God to have creative ways to be merciful to me because I'm creative in my sin. Maybe the way God showed me mercy yesterday won't cover how creative I was in my sin leading up to today. I need daily mercies. I need fresh mercies that are new every morning. I need fresh obligations. Maybe, maybe the problem is me, it usually is, but I want to know what God would have me do today. I want him to say, here's what I have for you today, Gabe. Here's what I have for you this morning. Here's what I have for you this afternoon. Here's what I have for you tonight. If it's always the same as the day before, I tend to get distracted and bored. If it's always the same, I get distracted. I get sidetracked. When we, even if God is really directing me to be the same thing, like something consistent, like, like be a godly man. Be a, a, a godly father. I need him to, to express that to me in new ways. I need fresh obligations because there's fresh challenges. I need fresh guidance. The, the guidance that worked for me yesterday may not work for me today. I need fresh guidance. My life is crazy. The, the problems that I faced yesterday are very different than the problems I'm facing today. Sometimes they're extremely different. Sometimes it's like, are those two, is that the same person or is that two different people's lives? Because what he faced yesterday doesn't even line up with what he's facing today. How many of you have been there? So, so I need fresh guidance. Worse, and this is far worse, sometimes my, my, my life and the things that I'm facing are very similar, but they're just slightly different. And if, and, and if I don't get fresh guidance in those, those minor areas, those small significances, then I can really get sidetracked. I need fresh guidance for my life. Every day I have new challenges in being a dad. Every day I have new challenges at work. Every day I have new challenges in my community, in my nation. And when we're facing so many right now, and the answer seems so, so confused. We need fresh guidance. I need guidance for today. And I need new guidance for tomorrow. I need fresh encouragement. I don't want my encouragement to have to be stored away and portioned out. I don't want to have to save some encouragement from yesterday just to get me through today and hope it lasts. I need fresh encouragement. Whatever encouraged me the last time I went through a hardship may not work this time. Sometimes you, you can't just say the same answer to different questions. You can't just say the, the same outcomes for different obstacles. I need fresh encouragement. I need new encouragement all the time. And I don't want to portion it out. So I come to God every single day, and I, I, I come to him with my daily bread. Lord, give me my daily bread. I need fresh encouragement today, God. I need fresh guidance. I need fresh obligations. I need fresh mercies, and the list goes on. I need fr- fresh strength over my addictions. I need fresh uh, um, um, strength just to love the people around me. I need help in controlling my tongue every day. Lord, I don't know your list but I need fresh provisions from God. When we daily bring our needs before God, he gives us fresh provisions for the day. Today's bread for today, tomorrow's bread for tomorrow. And so daily we come before God. So so if you're going to write anything down, write this down real simple. Ask for needs daily. 
Ask for needs daily. Know how to ask. We already talked about that in previous weeks. Know what you need. What's the essential? Make that list. And come before your heavenly Father every single day. Ask for needs daily. Ask for needs daily. This is simple, but it's powerful for us as Christians. This is how we move. This is how we live. And this is how we pray. Let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, again, as every week, we thank you that you taught us how to pray. Lord, we thank you that it's not just for repetition. We're not just reciting a bunch of words, but God, you gave us, you gave us an outline. You gave us a skeleton to flesh out. Lord, we thank you that you have fresh provisions for us every single day. Oh, how we need those fresh provisions. Every day, we need fresh guidance. We need fresh mercies. We need fresh, we need fresh obligations. We need fresh encouragement. Lord, would you help your people this week as they sit down, as they pray and meditate on making this my daily bread list, things that I need from God every single day. Lord, would you help them? Would you help them to write it out? Would you help them to to not overthink it, to make it simple? And Lord, may that list and our acknowledgement of our needs draw us to be continually dependent upon you, to realize it, to pray like it, and to see you work in our lives. Lord, help us to ask for needs daily. In Jesus' name, amen.